Ross, thanks for joining us. Mm -hmm. The contrast between the first half display and the second half display was remarkable. Mind blowing. Uh, you've sort of pretty much um, said my team talk there, Dave, because um, it's quite uh, quite astonishing, really, when you think that we can go from being there's a phrase, isn't there, something to the sublime or whatever it might be, but it was that that the. We looked edgy, let's, let's get it right. We looked edgy, we looked nervous, which I suppose is to be expected. Um, but I felt that our performance obviously really, really reflected that, that edginess for everybody, for, you know, for, for, for me, for, for the players, for, for the supporters, everyone's you know, a bit nervous at the moment. Um, and I do wonder, to a degree, does the, does the goal uh, come in, settle us down a little bit at, at half-time, and the boys sort of come out with the attitude of nothing to lose, so let's have a right go. Um, the issue that I probably raises for me is I feel that's probably been, happened on a lot of occasions this year. I think I probably said to you at the weekend about that's our season in a nutshell sometimes, you know, our poor start to a game and a grandstand finish, if you like. You walk off there and there's never a dull moment when, when anybody comes to the Brown Group Stadium anymore. Um, but it is, it's something that's um, to be applauded in terms of the, the way that we applied ourselves and the way we delivered the second half performance. Um, but something that we really need to keep looking at to, to try to start games a bit better. Another point game with another penalty. There's a lot of pressure on Josh Wright. I've just said that to him there. You know, there were some murmurs behind me about when I took CSA off to take Josh off instead. And, you know, I'm sure that after the first half that we had, there was a number of players that, that, that could have been. Um, could have been taken off the pitch, but I think he's missed a couple of penalties. Obviously, we handed the last one over to Leanne Goal, wasn't on the pitch tonight. So, for him to show that um, that strength and that uh, strength of character to step up, step up and, and put it away so well, he's, um, he deserves a massive pat on the back. And shortly after that, there was a melee. I must admit, I after what happened, I expected a red card. I didn't expect one for James Dayton. No, I don't think James Dayton particularly expected that. Um, there were some mind-blowing things that happened in that instance. I think the first things first is the ball goes into the box and we win a penalty. So if we've won the penalty for handball, it's a yellow card. The guy has punched it away from Jordan Maguire Drew's head. The fourth official tells me that it's because he's in the air that he hasn't been given a yellow card, which punching the ball, I don't know, being in the air, standing on your own two feet is anything to do with with any of that situation. So I think that was ridiculous when I spoke to the ref at full time about it. His answer to me was, there was so much going on. So that's a cop out because all the so much going on happened after the penalty was taken. If you can't see that it was a punch and you should have been should have been given a second yellow card, then then then, then my mind's blown. James Dayton gets sent off yet. Uh, Oliver, the substitute, who'd been taken off by Northampton, had run the full, well, the full, the half of the pitch to join in the melee and no one saw it. But yeah, they see Dan James Day and do something that, that I didn't manage to see. So a lot within that, that that doesn't make a great deal of sense. I'll be honest, I wasn't in the greatest position to experience what was going on. I was probably too busy celebrating, but um, yeah, some, some unusual things that came out. Have you spoken to the referee? I'm not allowed in there till half an hour afterwards. And as you can imagine, uh, Keith Curl wanted his say, I wanted my say. I didn't want to go too far into it. I was actually okay, so probably for one of the first times this season, but I was pretty calm, and even at full time, pretty calm. And it wasn't until I walked down the tunnel to, to ask the ref why on earth he never sent the guy off that gave the penalty away, that then it angered me a little bit for him to sort of try and blame the melee, which actually happened after we'd scored. So, um, yeah, peculiar turn of events. I suppose we should look at that first half. It was so yes. difficult for late night to really get inside the Northampton town. After I think we waited 37 minutes for the first shot. Yeah, and the strange thing, Dave, there was a break in play, and we were under pressure, and then we were poor in the first half. Um, there was a break in play. I don't know how long into the into the first half. The boys come over to grab a drink. It gave me a good opportunity to try and settle them down, and I knew that obviously it was the edginess that that had led to our poor performance. But I actually said to them, "We've been under the cosh a little bit. They've put balls in our box. They've had set pieces. They ain't had a shot yet." Sergeant really had to save anything. A um, couple of little scrambles and things like that. Connor Wilkinson had the best uh, opportunity of the first half until they scored, which was a little bit surreal. I might be wrong, give or take a couple, but um, as poor as we were, they didn't. You know, we weren't we weren't defending our goal last ditch over and over again. 
Um, so yeah, it did take some time, and I think that that was that was my um, my question and my my. Uh, my demand in the second half was, if we're going to play the ball forward, let's do it where we, we either give it to our strikers so they can be in the game, or we put it up the other end of the pitch so that we can take the pressure off ourselves, we can get the defenders facing their own goal and put them under a little bit more pressure like teams do to us. And I think when you're not playing well, those decisions, those techniques, you take your after ball, you're a little bit edgy, all those sorts of things do go, you know, do waver and, 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 the, and the quality of those are lessened, but there's something that we need to do better when we start games. It looks as if the players look more comfortable when the game's being played at a faster pace, but they don't play at a faster pace until they're a goal down. That's the, that's, that was what we've just talked about, really. Um, and I'm, um, as, a, as, a, as a manager, as a head coach, it's something that I will always do until someone tells me I'm doing it wrong. That I've just said to the players there, you're the ones that are out there. You're the ones that are there, you're the ones that are having to do it. So if I'm making demands of you in the first half that you feel are a little bit unrealistic or we're putting pressure, pressure on ourselves because of what I'm asking, let's, let's, let's discuss that to try to find that answer, find that solution as to why we start games in the manner that we do. I think what we have got to do, whether we start games well or badly, what we have got to become better at is seeing through those moments. And I looked down at my watch with two minutes to go before the board went up, so five minutes once he included the added time. And I thought, if we just see this through, it's a terrible first half and we can all walk in and we try and put it, put it right. Unfortunately, that's where we let ourselves down because we go and concede a goal that I think we can do a little bit more about. You changed the formation, is that because of the injury to the angle? Uh, no. Um, on the way back uh, from the game, obviously, at the weekend, looked at what potentially we might need to do. Um, and, uh, you and I have discussed it on a number of occasions about, at times, the striker, whoever it be, can get a little bit isolated. Um, we did it better earlier in the season where we could get control on the games and the strikers got closer to each other. Um, we created a few more chances and we looked a little bit more of a threat and in recent weeks that hasn't happened so well so it, it was conscious in, in my mind that I needed to address that um, and I felt that Matty deserved his opportunity to be up there and, and, and we wanted to try and get see if it would be more effective to have Connor starting inside the pitch rather than in that wide position. I understand it's a head injury for Lee? Yes, um, it's a bit of a strange one really. It, it was like a... I suppose you have to class it as a concussion type injury, which is obviously why straight away he's ruled out this evening. Was that at Brooklyn? Yes, it was. I mean, I think um, the, the amount of fouls that were made on Lee that were given against him at the weekend was quite mesmerising. But when we watched the game back, it wasn't really one of those that caused it. It was all, all of a sudden a bit of a coming together as he put a, put a pass in um, that caused the head injury that, 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 that we had to obviously then treat that as a concussion. We don't feel as though it is quite on that level, so we're hoping that because of the precautionary things that we've had to take that he might just only be missing this evening. What about Louis Dennis? Um, Louis, in, Louis is suffering with a bit of a knee problem at the moment. Um, so he's sort of been in, he got himself back, looked close, got on the pitch against Walsall. Um, and then we, we had, a, had a bit of an issue in training which meant that Louis missed out of the previous home game. He escapes me, I do apologise. Um, and then, and then now he's suffering another knee injury again, which, he, which has been reviewed again today. First start for Cissé, is he match fit? No, um, he's not, but I, I suppose we can't really expect him to be right now. Um, I, like, I like what I see from him, I obviously like what I saw from him before we signed him. Um, I think he gives us a presence and I think he'll give us a real control type midfield player when he gets on the ball in there. Um, but we need to get him up to scratch. So, you know, I, I heard you know, a few murmurs and, and, and moans when I brought him off today, but we've got to be careful with him. You know, we're suffering a huge injury list at the moment. Um, and what I can't afford to do is put somebody in, in jeopardy that's come here to, to get in the team, to play football, to help us. I can't put him in a position where I risk him for a long period of time in the game tonight and he ends up coming out injured. Newport next, will there be new arrivals before then? I would really hope so. Um, there's been a lot of work done over the last couple of days to try and do it, and I know I sound like a bit of a broken record, but um, we're working tirelessly um, to, to, to make sure that we get new recruits in, in the building. Um, I think we're very close to one, if not, um, if not a couple, and, and I think collectively for myself, for Martin and, and everybody else involved, with the ball to try and get those done is something that we're all extremely focused on getting done as soon as possible. It really was the faithful here tonight and they stayed with the lads, didn't they? They did, they did. And, and like I say, um, before the game, sorry, before the game, during the first half, disappointing for all of us, frustrating. 
boys look nervous, and, that's, and and I would say the same thing for myself and for the for the crowd. Is we we're, we're nervous because we haven't won enough games of football this season. But I think what the boys do really need when when we are nervous is, is people to back them. Um, and, and then the crowd did stay with us. So I'll, I'll be honest, I was expecting a bit more of a groan at, at half time and it didn't come, so I appreciate that, really do. Second half, like I say to you on a very, very regular basis, is it's everybody's responsibility to get everybody going. I thought the boys come out and give it a right go, which for me as a fan sitting in the stand, I would be excited by. And then the crowd reacted extremely well to that and give us their full back until the end. Thanks, Wilson. Thanks, Dave.